So, why in 2020, why is the web stack, that's HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, why are these three coding languages, and the web stack in general, I would argue, are the most important coding or programming technologies in the world? 100%. So, common question that I get from people, it's about careers, careers in software development. And you hear a lot of hype. It's all about machine learning, AI. It's all about Flutter. It's all about mobile development. It's all about gaming. And it's hard to determine for a young dev or young aspiring developer, aspiring program, where to focus. Now, the first rule that I always tell people, look at the local job market. Uh, number two, Figure out the type of work, what kind of environment you want to work in. That's very important. It's very important. As I said in recent videos, it's less about the language. It's more about where you work, the type of work that you want to do. Working for very large companies is a very different beast than working for uh, small, medium companies, startups, or doing freelance work. So that's the consideration. So let's go back to the main question here why do i believe in 2020 and beyond the web stack and the web technologies html css javascript web apps that kind of thing why is that so important why do i think that's going to be the most important and the most opportunity is going to be there there's a lot of opportunity in other areas a lot of opportunity in mobile a lot of opportunity in ai and machine learning a lot of opportunity in enterprise development, I suppose. But why those languages? Why that stack? Flexibility of the stack is number one. And number two is the uh, infrastructure already in place. One thing I'll point out, I go back maybe 10 years ago when social media was rising hard and a lot of people were starting to think, well, I don't need a website. I'm just going to have a Facebook page. I'm just going to have a Twitter account. And what they soon discovered, uh, well, not soon, but what they later discovered that uh, it wasn't cracked up to be so good. When you have all your eggs in the Facebook basket, the Facebook could take away your presence on the web. And then people who spent a lot of time and money, oh, is he over there? I'm going to avoid that. So people spent a lot of time and money developing their Facebook audience and then they found out that they had to pay Facebook to access that audience. So now what you're seeing more and more, I just noticed a trend in the last year or two, people are starting to realize, businesses are starting to realize we better invest in our own websites as opposed to Facebook or some other social media. It doesn't mean, it's not binary, it doesn't mean that you ignore social media. Of course you integrate social media into your marketing efforts. But you're gonna have to. You have to have. But you have to have your own web presence. You have to have your own home on the web. So. So for that reason alone, you're gonna see more and more people reinvesting or investing in you into websites. So then people will say, well, why, why, what about web builders like Wix or uh, Squarespace? And there's several others, I'm sure. They're not competition to knowing the web stack. They're just tools, right? They're just power tools that you can leverage for certain types of projects. There are certain projects where the budgets may be small. And uh, that's what you would use, just like you might use WordPress sometimes. Don't be worried about those web builders. They're not competition. They're just... Uh, they're just tools. Once upon a time, when WordPress was first growing big, a lot of web designers felt threatened by WordPress as well, right? But what they soon discovered is that WordPress, though it's massive, just created a huge amount of work in that space as well. WordPress professionals, WordPress freelancers uh, can make a lot of money. They can print money almost, I say, for a bunch of reasons which I won't get into here. So, yeah. So because of the, the rediscovery of the importance of having your own website, you're going to see a lot of companies investing in their own websites. Number two, there's already a ton of websites. I think there's like 7 billion websites out there, something, some crazy number. A lot of them are really crappy. 
and they're going to need to be updated. So um, those are two big reasons why you're going to see the web continue to grow and become more important in terms of uh, the web technologies. The final reason is I think that web tech is going to be used more and more and more for mobile development. Yep, for mobile development, more and more people are going to be using the web technologies because whether it be responsive sites, PWAs, or other uh, frameworks like uh, PhoneGap or something, the web is just a great way to get mobile apps that are functional and fast enough onto uh, the mobile uh, without having to have two code bases. You see, if you write apps in traditional languages like Java or Kotlin for Android or Swift and Objective-C for iOS, uh, yes, you have certain advantages there, there's no question, but those advantages are every year going away because the web technologies for mobile development are just getting better every year. And number two, the speed and the power of these smartphones means that the performance difference between native mobile development versus using a web stack to do that is becoming negligible or unseen altogether. So you're going to see more and more companies say, okay, we want a mobile presence, but we don't want to invest in a, a mobile app. We don't want to invest in having to maintain iOS and maintain an Android app. So we're just going to do it with web technology. Now, it doesn't mean every application for mobile can be done with the web, but I think that you could argue that maybe 95% can be, really, because most mobile applications and implementations are going to be text-based things. If you're doing games and stuff, of course you're going to go native. So there you have it. That's why I think the web stack in 2020 is going to become even more important than it is now. Those are three big reasons. And uh, so... If you're unsure of what technology to learn first, if you want to get into development in any way, the web stack you can't lose because you can go into small business, big business, you can do mobile. And the fact of the matter is, if you learn JavaScript for the web or Python for the web, this could be pivoted, Those your understanding of those two languages could be pivoted, pivoted into other areas that have nothing to do with the web, right? Uh, Python is used... It's the most popular AI and machine learning language. Python is very popular for server automation. Uh, Python can also be used for web app creation. JavaScript, again, JavaScript could be used on the server. It could be used in all kinds of different places. It's not as flexible as Python, but JavaScript is so popular, so widely used, it's hard not to get work if you know JavaScript. So there you go. Yeah, if you're not sure... What technology stack to learn? The web is what I would suggest. That's why in Studio Web, my primary focus was the web stack. I could have done different areas. I could have done mobile. I could have done uh, you know, a bunch of different things. But I decided to do the web because I think it gives you, the junior or the soon-to-be junior developer, the most opportunities to get high-paying work. Because I think at the end of the day, like me, I believe that most of you out there, not all, but I think most of you out there are learning to code because you want to get a high paying job or you want to start a business or you want to set up uh, a freelancing, consulting. All these things are good. So, for example, let's say you decide that you do some coding and decide you want to get into social media marketing, you want to start that kind of business up. Guess what? The web stack's going to help you there as well because understanding the infrastructure around the web. Is going to help you understand social media marketing in many ways. Um, I'm going to be releasing some social media marketing material uh, fairly soon when I get back from my trip uh, in uh, mid-November, late November, and uh, you'll see how that is. But anyway, so there you go. There's a yet another opportunity where understanding the web stack is advantageous. All right. I hope you like this uh, 360 view. We'll talk soon.